what's on the way. We thank and praise God for their safe arrivals and tuning in. Amen. Father God, we come before you this morning, first of all, giving you glory, honor, and praise for who you are and for all the things that you are doing in our lives. God, we say thank you for what you're doing even now. And God, we come before you lifting up unsaved loved ones, family, and friends as we do daily, God. We lift them up before you, God. And we just pray that as you draw them by your spirit, they'll take that step of faith. Bless you. They'll take that step of faith with God and follow after you, God, to accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives. Just ask and pray, God, that you have your way within them. And God, we pray for the widows in our communities, God. We just lift them up before you right now, God, that their need be met. And again, we thank you, oh God, for those offices and the brothers that are uh, in those offices that they have to go forth. We lift them up before you right now and ask you to continue to strengthen them. I lift up Brother uh, Reed to you right now, Carl Reed. I lift up Brother Rice to you, God, and others that are standing in the gap you know, and helping them on, on the side, God. Just ask and pray you continue to bless them, oh God, as they go forth in you. And God, we lift up the mother-in-laws, oh God, or Brother Rick and Brother they within them. God, we know you to be our healer. We know that it's absolutely nothing that you can't do. So we just ask and pray right now, God, that you have your way in, in their lives. And God, I lift up uh, Brother Dave, Brother Travis, as they prepare to travel, God, Brother Dave here in Korea, Brother Travis going back to the States. Just ask and pray, God, to watch over them, God, as they travel the dangerous highways as he flies through the air, God. We just ask and pray that you dispatch minister and angels to be encamped around about them. Shield them and protect them, oh God, from all hurt, harm, and danger. In the name of Jesus. And God, we continue to lift up Sister Yolanda's uncle to you for healing. God, we just ask and pray that you have your way in the midst. God, again, we know that by your stripes that we are healed, oh God, and that you sent forth healing. You sent to pray we continue to stand on it. God, and your will be done in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for Brother Baker, Brother uh, Thomas uh, Miller to you today, God. And we just ask and pray also for the co worker, Brother Miller's God. We just ask our lives. And God, again, we know that you are in control of all things, God. So we yield ourselves unto you. As your word says, we cast our cares. That means our worries, our anxieties, our sickness, our disease, whatever we, that may be going on in our lives. We know that you're able to burden all these cares at the same time, and you're able to bring about healing and whatever else we stand in need of, of God, you can provide. And so we just thank you right now, God, that you're moving by your spirit all of our pastors and wise God, and as you go forth doing your blessed will, God, ministers, clergy in the area, God, we just ask that you have your way in Jesus' name. We pray for all the churches, oh God, that are opened up in your name. Just lifting up the name of Jesus. Father, they're speaking forth your word that was set the captives free. God, we ask that you will have your way in our lives even the more. And God, we pray for those in positions of authority, our president, our government, so God, all around the world, God, that you will just move by your spirit. And Father, that they will begin to, to look to you and know that they need you in their lives, oh God. So I pray that you have your way in the midst of all of our world leaders, God, and our judges, our policemen, Father, those in the Senate, our Congress, God, we just ask you to have your way in, in them. God, they'll put aside their, their, their politics, oh God, and begin to follow after you and do those things that are right and pleasing in your sight. God, we are praying for the people of Ukraine, God, and in the midst of all this going on in that country right now, God, we just ask and pray that you bring about healing to take place within them, God, loss of family members, God, their possessions, Father, but I thank you for the lives that you have spared, God, Father, and those lives that have been spared, I pray that they'll look to you and call, Father, in the midst of all that they're going through right now, God, you are the way out, Father, you are the, the comfort, you are the peace, so I just pray that you have your way within them, God, I, I lift up, oh God, President Putin to you right now, God, he's asking and pray that you touch his heart, God, while he did sees you, God, as being God, but, but there is none above you, there is none like you in all the earth, and so I pray, God, that he will uh, humble himself, oh God, before it's too late, God, I pray right now that he will humble himself, oh God, and seek your face in Jesus' name, God, I just pray that you'll have your way in the midst of it all, and God, we continue to pray for marriages, God, we just ask and pray that you have your way in the midst of husbands and wives, Man and woman, God, that you are moved by your spirit in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for the children, Father. I just ask and pray that you watch over them, God, while they're in school and out of our presence, God. We know that you're everywhere, all seeing, all knowing, all powerful, and that there is absolutely nothing that, that you're not aware of. And so I just lift them up before you right now. And those families, God, that are preparing to travel uh, early next month, of God, when school is out, Father, in PCS season, and it's people, God, just ask and pray safe travel and mercy for all those that are departing. Pardon. And Father, we just ask that you would have your way in the midst of each and every one. God, continue to move by your spirit. Continue to do on us what you will as we humble ourselves under your almighty hand. Have your will, God. And I continue to pray, God, that we will turn back to you. 
Father, as a nation, for your word tells us that righteousness exalteth a nation. So I pray, God, that we get it right with you, God, in Jesus' name. Father, we can continue to pray and call upon the name of Jesus, knowing, oh God, that you hear the prayers of as much. Have your will, God. And Father, lift up missionary chips to you right now, God. Just ask and pray. Continue to bless upon him, God. Continue to move upon his body. Bless his wife, God. Father, have your way with him. With, there we just ask you to have your way within them and god i pray for the people of texas right now god those that lost family members god in the midst of the shooting last week god just ask and pray that you touch their hearts oh god and i pray for healing to take place oh god in jesus name not only in the physical but also in the spiritual god that people begin to recognize that they need you father i just pray right now that you have your way in jesus name Again, have your way this day, God, as we go forth in Sunday school and also for our morning worship. We just ask and pray, God, that you'll be welcomed in, oh God, and just we go forth praising and worshiping you. For you, oh Lord, are worthy of all the praise that we could ever give. And so I just want to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for those that gave up their lives, oh God, for freedom. Father, as we, we looked at Memorial Day on yesterday, observing and give God, just ask and pray that you touch those family members, God. Father, the loved ones that were lost during the wars, oh God, just ask and pray that they recognize that they were not in vain in, in the name of Jesus. God, and again, I just thank and praise you for all that you do. We say, have your way in us even the more. Again, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank and praise God for each of you that have joined in today. And uh, we thank and praise God for what uh, he's doing in our midst and for, for all the things that he's doing right now. He's having his way in, in our lives. And this morning, we're still in the, the book of Corinthians. We're in 2 Corinthians. Our subject this morning is Paul's thorn in the flesh. Lesson text is uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. And we got some related scriptures, uh, 1 Kings 19, 9 through 13, Romans 5, 1 through 5, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 10, and 2 Corinthians 11, 16 through 33. And the golden text is taken from verse 10. It says, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. And the time is probably around, it says around AD 56. And the place is uh, Macedonia. Uh, and again, our lesson outlines in three parts this morning. Paul's vision of heaven, 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4. And Paul's thorn in the flesh, 2 Corinthians 12, 5 through 7. And Paul's cry for relief, 2 Corinthians 12, 6 through 10. And I'm just going to go ahead and read our verses for, for this morning. And it reads, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up in the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one, I, of such a one will I glory. Yet of myself, I will not glory but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. I'm going to read the introduction that's in our uh, teacher book here. And it says, the idea of unanswered permeates Christian teaching. 
Unfortunately, this is a result of an inadequate understanding of scripture. The teaching that God does not answer us when we pray is without biblical merit. Just because God does not give us all our requests does not mean that he does not answer our prayers. I recall several times in my youth asking my parents for a particular thing only to be told to wait. That did not mean they failed to answer me. It just meant I, <laughs> I had to be patient. Sometimes we would see in this week's lesson, God even says no to our request. Again, no is an answer. Just as wait is an answer. God does not ignore you if he is telling you to wait, then wait. He then tells you no. Then ask him to bring your desire into line with his perfect will. God loves you and has your best interest in mind. And, and that is so true. <laughs> you know, if it's not the response that we desire, the response that we are looking for to get, then we say God didn't answer. And, and that's not always true. God sends an answer. As you say, we can say yes, no, wait. All three are a response. All three are an answer. Uh, and so, again, it may not be the answer that we desire, the answer that we like, but God answers us nonetheless. And so I, I thank and praise God that in the midst of all that we, uh, we go through in life, you know, and I know that we have been praying a lot and we've been talking about prayer a lot, but there's a reason, you know, and God has a purpose for, for everything. And, and I know that we, we go through things in life and, and we sometimes wonder, you know, well, God, why are you not answering and when you, when you think about it, it's like God may be silent, but yet he's still moving. Yeah. You know, he's still moving in our midst. And so even when, when, when we don't see God moving the way that we expect for him to move, it does not mean that God is not moving. He, he is truly moving. And we can say that even as we rise up in the morning, you know, we're, we're, we rose up this morning, God quickened us in our spirit to rise up. We didn't know if we were going to live or die last night when we went to bed, but God quickened us to rise up. So that lets us know that God is, is moving. We are, we are alive, we are well, we're able to see, we're able to talk, we're able to move. As the scripture said, we are living, uh, we move and have our being only because of what Jesus Christ has done. And so I thank and praise God that he is moving in the midst of our physical body as well as our spirit man, you know, and so he's, he's moving. And so we, we thank and praise God for that today. And so as we look at this lesson, Paul's thorn in the flesh, and I, I want to look at this because we all encounter things in life. Some good, some bad, some painful, uh, things that we go through. But in the, in the process of that, I believe that God wants us to look beyond what we are going through and go through it with him, but also know, have this understanding that God is going to deliver us out of what we're going through. Mm -hmm. And so in, on our jobs and in our marriages, our relationships, there are things that we encounter, things that we go through, but yet God is there. God is present. And so what he wants us to do is to call on him. Call upon him. And I love that scripture out of Isaiah 55, uh, 6, I believe, says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. So while we're still living, a living being, we need to be calling on God. Because, you know, if we're dead, we can't call him. It's all, it's done. It's over. But while we're going through what we're going through, know that we're not in it alone. We're not by ourselves. God sees all that we're going through. And he's the one that's helping us. He's the one that's sustaining us as we're going through the things that we are going through. So I just want to start with that, you know, again, thinking about things that God shows us, you know, and as we are living it out in our lives, he's still showing us things that we can, can learn uh, from what we're going through as we're encountering the tough times or the difficult times, so to speak, the things that we go through. God is there with us. Verse one says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. You know, and when I think about the life of Paul, and, and again, Paul was one that went through some things for the cause of Christ. Understand that when he, he wasn't born saved, none of us were, of course, but, but think about what he was doing prior to him being saved, how he persecuted the church and did all these things. He thought he was doing a good thing at that time until he came to the understanding that what he was doing wasn't good, that he was buffeting against the people of God, and he was buffeting against God, and there was a battle that he could not win. And then he had his close encounter uh, with Christ, in, in the on the wilderness in the wilderness uh, in Damascus on the road there and 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 the spirit of the Lord spoke out to him and said Saul Saul why persecutest thou me you know and and Paul recognized something at that time he said Lord you know it's like he called him out Lord you know so he knew that there was a power that was greater than him and so he recognized that 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 God was going to do something and in the midst of him being blinded 
the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him and told him that he needed to go into town and he was going to meet this man by the name of Ananias. And he was going to tell him all the things that he was going to have to suffer for the cause of Christ. And so God showed him something, even though he was literally blinded, but God opened up his eyes and he could see. You know, the blinders were removed. The scales came down and then God showed him what he was going to do and how he was going to have to go into minister to the people. And, and when you think about it, Paul's ministry, he dealt a lot with he, preaching to the Gentiles. You know, it's something that goes, it's like he had certain people, I want you to go talk to this group and I want you to go talk to that group. I just believe God specifically called Paul out. These are the ones that you're going to be talking to. These were the ones that was kind of left behind. Nobody wanted to talk to the Gentiles. You know, they wanted to go to the to some of their own, I guess you could say. But Paul was told to go talk to these people. So he went to the Corinthians and, and he, he spoke the word of God to them. And so understand that God has a purpose and a plan. He has it. It's by design that God's going to use each of us to go forth. But in this verse, he says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. God shows us things. He shows us visions. Then he gives us the revelation of, of what he desires for us to know. And so it's expedient, as he says, dollars for, for the glory. But when you think about it, it's expedient that we go forth doing the things of God so that the lives of men can be changed. And sometimes God reveals certain things to certain people. You know, we're all Christians. We're all in the body of Christ. But he may show me something he doesn't show you. Or he may show you something that, that I don't see, you know. And but, but, but as we come together in the body, we should be able to sit down and reason together and allow the spirit of God to reveal to us the things that he would have us to know as his people. And so you think about visions, you think about revel the revelations uh, of the Lord, the things that he wants us to know. And before I go further, I want to turn with me, and I didn't put this scripture on, on, the, on the screen uh, in the scripture today, but I want you to turn with me over to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter one. And a few verses I want to read from Ephesians chapter one, and then I want to read from Ephesians chapter three. You know, we've been studying in Corinthians for the last few weeks, and one of the things that Paul kept trying to convey to the people that he was saying, this apostolic gift that I have is not, it, not just of me, but it was of the one that appointed me. And we understood that because we understand that Paul was not with the other uh, disciples, the other apostles, as they were walking with Christ. And so each time he went to a place, he kind of had to justify himself, right? This is who I am. You know, and I am of, of God. I'm the one he's called out and appointed. He made full proof of that. But he was saying that I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. He wanted them to know that. But at the same point in time, he wasn't saying that to, to lift up himself or to glorify himself. He was saying that I want you to know who I am, but who I am is because of who, who sent me. I was sent by, by Christ to do this work. And so in, the, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, I want to read from verses 15 to 20, 23. There's a prayer of revelation here. You know, God wants to open our eyes to see these things. And so he's saying, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and having to all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now listen to this prayer. He says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That's us. He's talking to us. He's, this prayer is for us. And he says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So again, this revelation, this, this knowledge that we gain, we gain it through Christ Jesus. We gain it through the reading of his word. Uh, in Romans uh, chapter 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. This is what God wants us to take in. He wants us to take in his word so that we can come to the knowledge and understanding of the things that he is imparting. And this is how it comes to us. 
we, we read it, we gain it through the reading of his word, the hearing of his word. And so it's, re it's been revealed to us through the word of God. But now let's go to Ephesians chapter three. And we have another prayer here. And this is the prayer of realization. Yeah. Ephesians three, starting at verse 14. Ephesians three, starting at verse 14. God is revealing to us these mysteries, these things that he would have us know. So it's not like we're going out there and don't know what to talk about. He's revealed it to us through his word. And so this is what we stand on. He says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he, be, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inward man, it's defined by the soul, the inward man. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend or to understand with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and depth, and height. I mean, to grasp it, to get all that God is trying to, to get across to us. He says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And if God's in our lives, his power is working in us. He says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. He wanted this thing to be real to us. You know, it's like you can get a revelation, but now I'm getting a realization. I know how to walk out there and I can deal with these things because I have this knowledge of wisdom. Yes, Mr. Chair? And as you said, the world without end has every nation. Amen. Every nation. Amen. One word. So this is what he wants us to come to the knowledge of. Mm -hmm. And so now getting back to this lesson, when you talk about Paul's thorn in the flesh, I read through those verses again, verses one through four it says, it is, not, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to the visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ, in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or out of the body I cannot tell God know it. Such as one caught up in the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knew it. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, again, looking back at this vision and being caught up, understand when we talk about the, the third heaven, where God abides, you just don't, just, you just don't go there, you know? You have to be caught up. God has to, to bring you up to that place. So it wasn't like Paul, and as you read these verses, Paul is talking about himself. You know, this is who he's talking about, a, a man, but he's talking about himself, you know? And so the thing is, is that he was saying that he got caught up and God began to reveal some things to him. God began to show him things. And then he was back. It's like he was here, but now he's caught up. He could have still literally in the physical still could have been right here. But, but in the spirit realm, he was caught up in the third heaven, I believe. But the thing is, is that he got what God was trying to tell him, what God was trying to show him. He, he got that. And so in, in, his, in his weakness, God was yet strong. And so we understand the things that Paul was going through in his life. You know, he, he accomplished a lot. He gained a lot. You know, but yet every place, as we mentioned, that Paul mentioned, that he went to places and people didn't always accept him. You know, they looked at him as being kind of fetish. They looked at him like, who are you? What, what do you have? You know, it's like going to a place that if you don't have a PhD, you know, we don't know you. You're nobody. But when God, and I, I let's say it this way, when God spoke to Paul, into Paul's life, the Holy Spirit taught Paul. There is no greater teacher than the Holy Ghost. You know, he taught Paul the things that he needed to know. God says, I'm going to show him. I'm going to tell him all the things he's going to go through. But he equipped him. And I believe his brother David made, made a quote in my, uh, few, a, a while back. He said, God does not call the equipped. He equips the call. And so he called Paul out. He equipped him. He qualified him. He gave him everything that he needed to be able to, to go forth and speak. And when Paul spoke, he spoke with such authority. Nobody could refute what he was saying because you can't refute the truth. And so when he spoke, he spoke with God's authority. He spoke with conviction. And so all the people could do was, was take it. But at the same point in time, you know, we don't know who you are. You know, and, and, and some took it as, as saying that he was boasting within himself. But he wasn't boasting within himself. He was boasting in the one 
they sent him. He was boasting in Christ. He was boasting in the Lord. And so we understand the things that he was going to go through, but God called him out. And so he said he was caught up in the third heaven. And so when you look at that, you begin to think about, okay, so if there's a third heaven, it means got to be a, a first heaven <laughs> down here on the earth. And then there'd be a second heaven, you know, up in glory. But when you think about what, what he's saying here, he's saying God has a place. In this third heaven, only those that it, that's going to be caught up. We know that in the, in the last, it talks about it in uh, believe in Thessalonians, that we're going to be caught up to meet him. He's calling us up, those that are saved, those that are, that are his, that belong to him. He's calling us up. So it's not like I can just get up there and say, well, I'm going to go to the third heaven. You know, you have to be caught up to get to the third heaven. Yeah, come in. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but I'm just thinking as we're going through, you know, understand that God called Paul out. He was showing Paul some things. He was revealing some things to Paul. But at the same time, he revealed those things to Paul. Paul got caught up back in him, in the natural, I should say, back in the natural sense. And he was going forth to the Corinthians. He was going forth to the Gentiles. And he was telling them things that only God could reveal. There's certain things that God says, you know, that you're not going to utter. But these other things that God wanted him to know, the speakable words, he wanted that for us, for us to learn and to come into the realization of what God is all about. And so, again, he boasted in the Lord. And you think about all the things that, that God did through Paul and in Paul's life. You know, that says a lot. That as he went from missionary on missionary journeys, as he went from place to place, he had something to deliver. He delivered what God gave him. That's all he could, that's all he could do. This is what he had been taught to do. And so as we're learning more about Christ, as we're diving, diving into more, God's going to take some things out of us, and he's going to share that to those that we come in contact with, those in our job, those in our family. You know, we have something that God has revealed unto us, and we want to reveal it unto them. We want it to make it known to them so they too can come into the realization that God can do all these things in them as well. And so I, I thank and praise God how he used Paul you know, as he called him up and showed him these things and, and then how Paul began to write it all out. When you think about all the epistles that, that are written, Paul had something to talk about because God revealed it unto him. He showed him these things and, and he was able to write out and share that with all of us. And so he was well taught. Go ahead. And you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that because uh, he showed him things that he was not allowed to, to speak. He showed him something that was personal for him whatever it was mm. but it was so incredibly powerful for him that it changed him forever internally to the point where he was bold and, and unafraid of anything so whatever that was that that he couldn't that god showed him that was just for him was just incredibly powerful mm. and those are the kind of thinking so what you know god does that for us maybe he'll go to give us something or show us something or be a way with us that is not for somebody else Sometimes it is like what he gave Paul to preach and you know all those other things, but those those not necessarily secret things, but the private things, um, to hold on to that without giving it away, it's like a precious gift. You know? mm. And those I just can't it just makes me think about whatever that was, you know, whatever it was that, that he you know he saw heaven and you know, and then there's not lawful to other, which means that I guess you could do it if you really wanted to, but you know, but Whatever those private things are that, that God gives us, maybe we should just hold those close to our heart and, and not speak them out loud all the time. Not, you know, tell it on the mountain every time God gives us something private like that. Amen. Hey, Any other comments before we go further? <laughs> When they, when they didn't receive him right away, hmm. and because they were unknowing, they didn't know what he was talking about. Nobody ever told them anything like that. Hmm. You know? Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Yeah, and to add on to what's uh, what's already been said, those uh, those things that uh, you know was revealed to Paul. Well, you know, God, like you said before. There's nothing, there's nothing private. God gives us his whole word. We don't need to know any more or any less than from in the beginning to amen. There's not a, it's not like a secret. It was only for Paul. So when we're ready to receive the things out of what God has already given us in his word, then we can go forth and use that 
to help someone else. And until we get to that point in our spiritual walk, that God will reveal that to us. It's not like that was something secret and God doesn't want us to know, know about it. He's revealed his whole will to us in his word. We, we just have to read it. And those, those revelations are, you know, we, we take the, what God has revealed to us and share it with our brothers and sisters in Christ and as well as those in the world. And so each, each has, a, we're, we have different audiences, if you will. And so we have to, you know, just be aware of who, and, and who we're, we're, we're sharing that with, because they may not be, uh, be able to understand it or, or receive it at that point. But we're, but that's why we need to see God and, and ask him how, how we're supposed to share what he's, what he shared with us, uh, with others that the, their lives might be changed as well. Amen. Amen. I agree with what you're saying. It's like, very important. God does know the audience and he knows what people can or cannot, cannot take. And so again, he revealed it to Paul, but Paul, the thing I like about Paul was that he, he, he kind of like reminded me of David. He sought the Lord. You know, he just didn't just step out there, but he did, when he stepped out, he stepped out of the boat. But at the same point in time, God knows, knows who's going to be in the audience and he knows what they can or cannot take. And so it's, it's like, it's almost like being a, a, a babe. You know, you feed them baby food when they're when they're in their infancy. You know, you're not going to give them meat, you know, steak or whatever the case, because it would choke them. God knows knows these things, so He can reveal this thing to Paul. But at the same point in time, He knows when it needs to come out of Paul to those that that's in the audience to be able to uh, to take, so that they can grow and prosper. So I, I thank and praise God for that for that revelation. Yeah, it's like what what you said before about. Um... God doesn't reveal the same things to each person every time. Like he'll, he'll, he'll deal with you in one way and reveal things to you differently than it might be to me. But when we come together, then as one body, you know, jointly fit together, then when the time is right or whatever that may be, um, then it can be real. Amen. But he definitely, you know, uh, it's almost like being the only child sometimes, you know, he, he deals with us so personally, hmm. you know, and yet so collective. It's, it's, Amen. it's awesome. Amen. Well, again, we talked about being caught up, and we know we look forward to that day when we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord God. We, we, none of us should be hesitant, you know, because that, that's a good thing. We're going to end up where he's at and to be with him. Uh, verse number three and four says uh, that he was caught up in, in the paradise. So, I mean, this, this is where he got the word that God re revealed to him. But at the same time, you know, when we take the word of God in, we got to recognize who's around about us, you know, as we go forth feeding giving them the word of God that God has given unto us. And, uh, and I thank and praise God that he, he knows, as I said, he knows the audience, he knows that who's in the midst and what they need. And uh, just as we needed things in, the, in time past, God revealed those things unto us. But, but you just think about all the things that God revealed to him. Yes, it, it could have made Paul become prideful, you know, but he didn't. He has always pushed it back, back to God. Let's look at verses five through seven. Says, uh, talks about Paul's thorn in the flesh. Uh, of such an one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of of my revelations, there was given to me a, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And when you think about this portion of scripture, Paul, you know, it doesn't say it's a, a physical thorn. It, it could be physical, it could be mental, it could be, you know, theoretical, whatever the case may be, but it was something that it bothered him, I'll put it that way. It, it bothered him to the point that it, it kept him stable. It kept him grounded uh, in the word of God. Uh, he didn't, again, he didn't look at himself as being, I'm somebody, I've arrived, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. He was making sure that it always bent, it always, the glory always went back to God. And so in, in saying that, he was saying, I'm nobody. What, what I have or who I am is only because of, because of God. It's not because of me, myself. He wasn't taking any glory for it, what I'm saying. But at the same point in time, as he's going through this, this period uh, of the thorn, whatever it be, and, you know, we don't literally know. I mean, the word doesn't outright say it, but he has this thorn in the 
flesh, that is, it, it makes him think. I say it like this. It makes him think, I better make sure that I'm always glorifying God. You know, I'm going through my weakness. God is yet strong. I'm going to go through this because God is going to help me through it. I, I just want to remember. And so maybe this storm was to the point of saying it was something that reminded him not to try to be more than be who I've called you to be. Share what I've given you to share. And, and that's it. Don't try to put anything into it. Don't take nothing away from of what I've given you, but we be rooted and grounded. In the, in the things of God. So he wasn't out there boasting. He wasn't out there bragging in himself. He was out there boasting. And you sometimes hear me say, that, I make my boast in God. You know, I can't do anything in and of myself. None of us can. But through Christ, we're able to do these things. And this is why the glory should always go back to him. We should always acknowledge his presence in our lives as we're going through life every day. We should always glorify God. And so this is what Paul did. He gave God glory. He shared the word of God with people, but the glory always went back to God, the one who sent him out on the journey. And so we see Paul's uh, humility in, in the midst of all this. You know, he didn't try to make himself to be above everybody. It's, it's like saying he went in and he says, accept me for who I am. You know, I, I'm just like you. But God has, has given me some things, but it's still God. It's, it's, not, it's not about me. It's about him. He wanted to make sure that the attention was always focused on Christ, on God. It wasn't on him. He was just uh, being used by God. Go ahead. Well, and when I when I read, and what you just you just hit the hammer on the head with it. When I read a messenger of Satan sent mm. himself to me, I think it's King Saul. But what, what he did to King Saul was punishment, right? When he yeah. sent that evil spirit out of him, that was punishment. This is different. This is like he said, it's to keep him, it's to keep him straight, it's to keep him from boasting. Um, a messenger of Satan sent to buffer him. How that plays out. Mm. You know, and we all can find ourselves in, in a situation, you know, on our jobs in, in particular. You know, we, we may work, we do our job as unto God. And people see see that you're doing your job as unto God, but that still does not preclude them from, from buffeting you, you know. They, they know you're doing it as unto God, you're doing it as unto him, the glory goes to God. But yet, they still coming at you. And why is that? It could be out of envy. It could be out of jealousy. It could be out of pride. But again, if we recognize who we are and, and stay, I, I say like this, if we stay in our place, you know, we stay in the place where God has us at, then it, it's going to be okay. God is the one that promotes. God is the one that, that, that puts down one and brings up another. He's, it all comes through him. And so sometimes we, 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 we are buffeted because of who we are for Christ. And so understand that because you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you now have accepted him as Lord and Savior of your life. There's going to be some things that's going to come at you. And then when it comes at you, you got to go at that thing in, in, the, in the spirit of God. You got to understand that you, you know, it's not me. God, I'm being buffeted, and, but it shouldn't uh, carry you down. All vote is knowing that God is behind you. God is supporting you. God is the one that's keeping you up. So we don't have to back down from anything because who? God is backing us up. And so I'm, I'm not boasting in me. It's, it's God just holding me up to go through what I'm going through. Yes, I'm being tested. I'm being tried. I'm being persecuted. I'm being talked about. All these things are going to come at me, but I can make my boast in God that he's going to help me through it. So even as he has this thorn in, this, in, this, in the flesh, so to speak, he has this thorn, but it keeps him grounded. It keeps him looking to God. You know, because if, if he gets into this the prideful mode, that's kind of going to my message for the day. But as he goes into the pride mode, if he was to do that, then he's looking at himself more than he's looking at God that's bringing these things about. And, and God is not being glorified. He's being glorified. And so he was very careful when, in his walk that he would always do it right, that God would be glorified and, and that Jesus would be exalted. And so this is why we need to make sure that we're always following Christ. Go ahead. Because I was, I was talking to one of our sisters uh, in Christ about a particular new person who's just really treating me bizarre, mm. just really, really bizarre. And, and uh, I was talking to her about it. I said, well, I'm, I've never said anything. I've never done anything. I've always, you know, I don't understand why this is happening. What did I do? And she said, it's very simple. She said, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you don't, they'll, they'll do it to you. And you don't, they don't have to have a reason. And I'm like, now it makes sense. I don't, you don't have to do anything. They're just going to do it. Yeah. Your physical presence speaks for itself. And it is something that she cannot relate to. So, therefore, what does she do? Straight 
destroy the galaxy. <laughs> and let you know that you must be living a, a life that's right. Yeah. 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 And to add on to that, you just look in Ephesians uh, chapter six, it tells us why. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Mm, so amen. it's a spiritual it's a spiritual battle. Amen. And 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 you know, we're we're known known of God, but also we're known of the enemy. And it's not the enemy that that's uh, it's on the other side of the 38th parallel, it's in China. The the, the enemy is the yeah. one that uh, is trying to destroy the entire world, yeah. and that's it, and that's the devil. That's where our fight is, and it, and, and, and we can only fight through prayer. And it's a wonderful thing we've been studying about prayer, because God answers prayer, and you can see where where uh, where Paul was praying about this. And so as we go through things, it builds us up spiritually because we're in a spiritual battle. It's not it's not what you can't take up uh, you know weapons against it uh, other than what our, our our weapons are not what carnal. They're Right. Spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the only way we can fight this battle and win is through asking God to do it on our behalf. Because just looking back on Elijah and his servant in the tent, when the servant came running telling Elijah, hey, we're surrounded. And then, got, and then Elijah asked uh, God to open his servant's eyes. And, and, and then he seen the fiery chariots and you know what, how God was protecting him. So if we could see the spiritual things that were happening around us, there's a spiritual warfare going on right now. We just can't see it with our own natural eyes. But that's why we need to take it to God in prayer, just Amen. as Paul did. And and God will answer it according to His timing, His purpose, and His will for both us and and uh, who we're praying for and and praying with. Amen. Amen. Well, that's another subject that God gave me for a message. It's a spiritual thing, you know, and we got to see that it's not natural. And that scripture out of Ephesians, it, it just lines up. You know, we have to know what we're battling against. It's, it's like nobody wants to go into a battle and not know, not know who the enemy is. You, you got to know who the enemy is. That's, you know, and then you can go in and you can defeat the enemy based upon who you are in Christ. And just know that Christ is going to be with you as you're going through uh, in the midst of the battle that, that you may be undertaking. Just trust God. Amen. Any other comments? Verses 8 through 10 says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So three times he said he, he, he consulted the Lord about this thing, you know, and no doubt we would do the same thing. When we're in pain, it being inflicted upon us. We're praying, God, take this pain from me, you know. And sometimes God may instantaneously take that pain from you. And then there are times when God may allow us to go through this thing. Because, you know, I'll say it like this. We don't know how much we can take until we got to take it, you know, until it's on us. We don't know where our faith is at until our faith has been tried. You know, we might say, I'm strong in the faith. But then all of a sudden you're tried. Your patience is tried. You know, your physical tolerance is being tried. And now you're saying, oh, well, I'm not as strong as I thought I was, you know. And now, what do we do? We consult the face of the Lord. We call upon him. And so that lets us know that in the midst of all the things that we're going through, we need to consult God. If it's, and as he said, we, he gives a response. He can say, well, go through what you're going through. My grace is sufficient for you. You know, I'll see you through this. And so what did Paul do? He, he just had to live with that. Okay, God told me his, his grace is sufficient. In my weakness, yet am I strong? Okay, well then, I'll go through what I'm going through. I don't like it. Nobody likes going through pain, especially physical pain. It, it hurts. But at the same point in time, we're able to make it through because we're still counting on God. I use that for an, an, an illustration. Most people, when you go to the hospital now for any type of, of injury, it could be a leg injury or a knee injury or ankle injury, whatever. And they, you can go through the surgery, 
But what's the doctor going to say at, at, after the end of the surgery? You're going through recovery. What's he going to say? We're not going to release you until you walk. <laughs> you know, we're not going to release you until you show us that you are able to, to go through. But what God is saying to us, we're able to go through this. We can weather this storm because God is with us. God is going to see us through. And so I'm counting on him. The all-sufficient one, which he is, he's going to see me through what I'm going through. So my strength, my strength is made perfect in weakness. You know, God is showing up on the scene and he's carrying us through. He's seeing us through the things that we're going through. And so he, he, he just said three times I consulted him. And, but see, what he was looking for was a response uh, that God was moving and he was going to take this storm, whatever it, what it was stimulated, he was going to take that from him. And God says, no. There was the response. It basically, no. My grace is sufficient for you. So whatever this storm is in the flesh, you got it. It's with you. But even with that, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to see you through what you're going through, what you're facing. And so Paul continued on his journey. He continued on the mission that God had sent him out on. He didn't stop doing what God had called him to do. Although he had cried out, he didn't get the response that he was looking for. But God did tell him that I'm, I'm going to take care of you. So God did answer him. God did respond to his call. He was letting him know, I heard you. I heard what you consulted me about. And I'm going to see you through what you're going through. And so, again, this is a lesson for all of us. We may be going through things in our lives. It may seem hard. That could be your thorn. It seems hard to me. But God, you're trusting God to deliver you through this. And so, again, I think about what Paul wrote in the Corinthians. He says in our, his motivation, you know, for, for speaking, he's saying, for my light affliction, this, this thing that Paul is going through, it's a thorn in his side. It's a thorn in his flesh. But it's a light affliction that he's going through. Go with me over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, about five verses I want, I want to just speak out here. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. So, I mean, there's things going to be puzzling us in our lives as we're going through, but we're not without help. God's going to help us. He says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. So, yeah, you're going to go through some things. We are perplexed. We are puzzled. But God still delivers us through all these things. He says, we're persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Even though we're persecuted, we're not forsaken. Even though we're cast down, we're not destroyed. God is still watching over us in, in the midst of what we're going through. So to understand this, trials abound in our Christian life, in our, on our Christian journey. But then the motivation that we have is this. Go down to verse number 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He says, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, the inner man, is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, now I understand Paul was going through the storm of the flesh. He, he says, but for my light affliction, it's but for a moment. Work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we go through what we go through. But understand it's working a greater reward for us up in glory. Yes, I'm being tried by fire. I'm being talked about on my job. I'm being persecuted for whatever reason. For no reason. But it's working out something greater for me on the ladder again. You know, look at, at the ladder. And my ladder is going to be better than, than the beginning because of what God is bringing us through, taking us through allow us to go through to get to be with him because we know in the end what we're going to be caught up to be with him and that's the place we all want to endeavor to be to be caught up in glory with the lord god our maker and so uh we, we continue to go through what we go through any any comments on so far any feedback again paul go ahead no, I like what you said, you know, because uh, uh, it says in the word of God that we're going to go through uh, trials and tribulations, but be, he said, be of good cheer. We're going to overcome the world just as he overcome the world. It's yeah. not, it's not a rose petal walk. That's a, that's a lie from the pits of hell. As soon as we become 
you know, uh, one of his, you know, we become a, uh, a saint. We, we get our names written in the book of life. We're going to go through some things and it goes back to the spiritual warfare. Now we're known We're we are now, we're now the, uh, the enemy of our real enemy and, and, and the things that we used to do and say and all those things, uh, it, the, the spirits of, you know, darkness, those, those things know how to get, at us because they, they got at us at one point, but now that, now that we're changed, those things are going to come at us again. And we're going to go through uh, temptations. And we're going to go through trials and, and tribulations just as, just as all the, uh, the saints did in the Bible, we can read what they went through. And it, mm-hmm. and it all started in the, again, in the spirit, spirit realm, they were out doing good things, but yet what happened to them? It wasn't because they were doing good things. It was because of whose they were. And that's, that's why it's because of who you are and who's and whose you are uh and 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 that's because you know the spirit of god lives in you now now you've got something to fight for you know your your friends and your family and your loved ones you can you can fight those things through uh the spiritual warfare that we you know we've been given is is prayer and it's very important to understand you know this this is a battle there's souls in the balance and and you just look in the Bible how how the the saints went through it before. It's no different for them than it is for us today. Amen. Well, the scripture you alluded to, uh, John chapter sixteen, verse thirty three, says this: "These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world." And, that, and that's it in a nutshell, you know. Mm-hmm. We will overcome because of what Jesus Christ has done for all of us. And I just thank and praise God for that today. As we pray to close out, any comments before we close out in prayer? Any other comments? Uh, well, amen. If you got a thorn in your flesh, just keep on consulting the Lord. Amen. <laughs> He's going to see you through. Everything's going to be fine in the, in the end. So we thank and praise God for that. Let's just bow heads again for a word of prayer. Father God, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come before you once again giving you glory, honor, and praise for who you are, for the things that you are yet doing in our lives, God. We say thank you. Father, we thank you for this lesson, God. We thank you for the life of Paul that we've been studying the last few Sundays, God, and the life that he lived for you. I pray, God, that we strive to live the same type of life, Father God, even more so to live the life of Christ. God, that we can go forth and the people see and recognize that you are working in the midst of us, oh God. You're working in our lives, God. And so I just thank and praise you, God, for this, this time of coming together to encourage one another. And we continue to stand on your word, God. We continue to read your word. We continue to apply to our lives that we will be the better for it. Have your way in us even the more. Now, God, as we prepare to go into our morning worship experience, God, we just ask and pray that you're moved by your spirit. We welcome your presence in this place. God, we pray that you would have your way in Jesus' name. For we know, God, we can't do anything without you. We acknowledge that. We need your help. We need your strength. We need your power working in the midst of us, oh God. So I just pray right now that you have your way. Continue to move by your spirit in all of our lives. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.